Hi everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Arts. Today we're going to be talking about Infinity Sun by Amzo Rara. And this is a book that I got from NetGalley. I got an ebook copy of it in exchange for an honest review. And let's just go for this. So I haven't stopped thinking about the both at the end, like since I read it, and that was a while ago now. So I've been thinking about this book forever. So reading another one of Anne's books it was at the top of my TBR pile. And I now have this one, which I got after Infinity Sun. So like, we'll see how this goes. So Infinity Sun, we're going to start off with the likes. Because, um, a little spoiler alert, I think I gave this book two stars. So we're going to start off with the likes. So I'm sorry in advance this comes up as a very negative review but it's just a review and it just happens to be one where I have more negatives and positives. So the first few chapters of the book, it started off very rocky and I started to get into it and then it went downhill again. So I'm going to say there was a bit at the start where I did, I was invested. And the plot of the book was okay. I like the idea of phoenixes and reincarnation and there was this huge emphasis on magical creatures in general. And in a lot of fantasy, especially in like the contemporary urban fantasy, that world, that genre, there's a lot of focus on magic, but not magical creatures. So this was good, especially since I saw Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and I am looking for more Fantastic Beasts in books. And another thing I liked that there was this huge amount of hype around the book. I'm saying was as if the book's been out, but it's just... There's a lot of advanced readers right now. I think, does the book come out sometime in January? I don't actually know. But yeah, I like there's a huge amount of hype around this book and I like how much positive reviews there were and some of them saying that, it, you know, it gave them heartache and tears. And even if I personally didn't like the book, I like that it made someone feel something. Because that's like all my standards are, is have feelings. <laughs> Another thing I liked was this, the relationship between, I forgot both of the brothers' names. They have this codependent sibling relationship and it's a complete disaster and I love disaster siblings. Even if you know that's an unhealthy relationship, but it's just, it's good. It's good, okay? And I also like the reluctant chosen one vibes. And that's something I haven't really seen, I mean, I haven't really seen. Like, the big reluctant chosen one I think of is Percy Jackson. I'm looking around for the books, but I think they're here. They're this side. Never mind. Because we love a chosen one trope, but if they don't want to be, that's even better. <laughs> but yeah, I think it's coming a bit overdone, but I did like, I do like this trope. Wow, my hair's a lar not large, it's just something. I think for a sneeze coming on. It's gone. <laughs> and I think the main thing about this book that I like, that it's the kind of book that me from five years ago would have fully loved. So this would have been like when I didn't read Percy Jackson when I was like younger. It was like a three, four year ago thing. Like I was still a teenager. But if I think about my younger self, this like Infinity Sun would have been one of the books I would have loved so much. And I would have read in a few years and been like, why did I like this? But yeah, it has this kind of like nostalgic feeling to it. And I read it and it's like, little me would have loved this. But it's just a shame that current me <laughs> is the one who read it and didn't enjoy it. <laughs> okay, now we're going to go into like the actual proper reviewy parts. And so the negativity begins here. Why am I doing a peace sign? Negativity begins here. <laughs> So the first thing, the world building, it's lacking. <laughs> We're thrown into this new world with like very little information and it's not enough information where you can actually put the pieces together and work something out. There's mention of a blackout, which is apparently this like massive important event in the past in this world, but there's like so little description about it that I don't know what the blackout is. I've read this entire book now and I have no idea what this massive life-changing event was. And I think I read some of this review where they went back through the book to find what it said about the blackout and it just said, the worst attack New York has seen in my lifetime. 
So this massive life-changing event. When is this worst attack on New York? My mind goes straight to 9-11. But we're not going to bring 9-11 comparisons into this. It just says the worst attack and that's open to so much interpretation of what it could be. So yeah, this massive event is just doesn't sound nowhere near as terrible as it must have been. Because the worst event? But what, what was the event? Probably does say a lot more in the book, but my memory is a sieve rather than a sponge. So this is what I remember. <laughs> Okay, this book also uses like a lot of words for like classes of magical people I guess you could say and I'm not sure about like the importance like in the ranking system who's at the top who's at the bottom I don't really know the difference between is it spectres, bloodcasters, spellwalkers, celestials and I don't know which one's which I don't know why they're important and I said at the beginning that I did love the magical creatures in it but there is very limited mention on the history of it. I, I want to know how they're important to this world, like how they live alongside humans, all that, but I, there's, there's none of that that I remember. There could be some of that, I just don't remember. Like, phoenixes are meant to be the focus point in this book, so I was expecting there to be more about them. It mentions a lot of phoenix a lot, and I still have no idea if it's just symbolic, if it's a literal phoenix. I know someone's trying to steal a phoenix is an egg at some point, but why? What? Why? <laughs> and yeah, I'm making this... I wrote the review a few months after I read the book, and I'm making this video a month after I wrote the review. And I'm just going to say there's nothing I... about the villain. I think her name was Luna, which first... Luna's such a common name in YA now. I guess it started with Luna Lovegood, but it's like the moon names and like s celestial spacey names. So it's like, give your villain a better name than Luna. Because like, that's not threatening. Give me a good villain name. <laughs> but yeah, this villain. Um, I remember nothing about her besides her personality was just be evil. Be two steps ahead. What does that mean? <laughs> and yeah, I had so much frustration actually writing this review and reading the book. But now I'm just like talking about it, I'm just thinking how ridiculous some of it is. And yeah, I saw this mention in someone else's review, but this book reads rather than a fantasy. It's very much marketed as a fantasy. And rather than being a fantasy, it reads more like a contemporary that just happens to be in a, fant a fantasy world is set in, I think it's set in New York it just has like fantasy, like magical people in it and like the magic doesn't even seem to have a huge part in the book so it, yeah, I agree with it, it's very much a contemporary in a fantasy world rather than a fantasy so we're going to move on to characters um, Brighton is one of the brothers, he's not the main chosen one brother, he's the other brother. And he's the only one I kind of remember something about out of all the characters in this book, and there are a lot. This is the only one I remember something about. And he's not the main, I think he narrates, but he's not the main brother, and I didn't even like Brighton. Because <laughs> he's so reckless and he endangers his friends and family just for the sake of YouTube views. He's literally the do it for the video kind of guy. And there's a lot of points in this book where it just tries to make the reader feel sorry for him but it it doesn't work out because it's so forced and the character is not likeable enough to get sympathy or empathy from the reader and all the other characters in this just felt like replicas of him but very undeveloped replicas so it was basically every character was just bright and bright and bright and bright and bright and with one or two defining traits and another thing is that when these characters are when these characters are introduced, I think they're introduced like very much all at once. Or a lot of them are introduced together. So they don't really have the time that they deserve to develop the character. It's very just like his person, his person, his a person. And they like all the ones introduced at once just blended together into like this big faceless cast of people. 
and there are like so many named characters in this book. I said that already, but there are so many characters, but so many of them are just straight up unnecessary. Like you could cut them out or you could condense them into an existing character. Since so many of them are just copies of Brighton, just like mash them instead of having 10 characters, just make it, make it two, make it two. One of the things this book does do right in regards to character is that it does have this like huge diverse cast and there's a lot of like different backgrounds but there's a lot of LGBT representation and I think there's a lot of race representation I, d I really don't remember <laughs> but as these characters are all copies with one personality trait a lot of the personality traits a lot of the personality traits are just like the character's purpose is to just be a gay character but yeah it has representation but it doesn't have good characters so do with that what you will and i think my last negative point about this book is the amount of cliches i don't mind the cliche everyone loves a cliche that's that's what the like thing is is to be likable and usually a lot of tropes and cliches in the book work very well and like in favour of the book. <laughs> but this book has so many tropes and there's nothing new added or nothing unique or a different spin to the trope that makes it more interesting and it doesn't really add to the story. It seems to be there like just for the sake of having a like cliche. It's like people love enemies to lovers or romances so it's like let's just put one in just because people like it. It doesn't add anything to the book, but people like it. It's kind of like that. That was a bad example because Enemies to Lovers does really add to a book. But yeah, it's one of those things where it's just a lot of stuff's been added for the sake of editing it. And it's really hard to give examples for this specific book without just shoving spoilers down your throat. But I saw someone describe it as like a stereotypical, a stereotypical, I can't talk very well today. I saw someone describe it as stereotypical with like Harry Potter ripoff fantasy and I agree with that. It's one of those. And however, amongst all this negativity, how oh, can I fix this lighting? Sure. Okay, so amongst all this negativity, I am very genuinely happy that an urban fantasy book with a gay main character written by a gay author has received like such attention and hype and it deserves it we deserve representation in this bookish community that we all here for. And I'm also very happy about the diversity and the representation, like there's a lot of queer characters and people of colour. And it also, I think there's a point where it touched on body image. I wrote that down in my review, but I, I, I don't remember. <laughs> but yeah, I think there's a point where it touched on body image and this is something that I think is a very important issue for the author. So I like that that's there. So overall, I know this review comes off as very negative, but it's because I was expecting so much from it and it had a potential to be something incredible, it just fell short. I will leave a link in the description to my written review if you'd rather read that than listen to me. I probably should have said that at the start, because if you've listened to this, you've listened to me ramble. But yeah. But also, if you have read this book, leave your comments below, because I, I would love more opinions. Because I'm very much focused on mine and the other two star reviews on Goodreads. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!